going to start first by talking a little bit about the ideas of how menstrual cycles fit in our culture, how we think about and feel about them. We'll then talk about a tool, the Daily Menstrual Cycle Diary, that allows you to understand what's going on for yourself. My first memory of the menstrual cycle was the day I got my period, strangely enough. And uh, interestingly, many women do remember that first day. It happened to be, and I think that's kind of fortuitous in a way, my 13th birthday. At the time, I was living in a little village in Alaska, and it was a brilliant, beautiful summer day. But I didn't feel quite right, so I went out to the outhouse. The most unusual thing happened. This tiny little brilliant golden green bird, I learned later a Wilson's warbler, came and sat on the half door of the outhouse. And that was kind of, a, well, in a way, a message to me to say this was something important. And um, it wasn't, it was many years after that that I decided to go into medicine and then go on into studying about the menstrual cycle. In particular, how the changing estrogen and progesterone in the normal menstrual cycle affect all of our lives, how we feel, how our bones grow and uh, maintain their strength, how our skin looks. Um, in fact, there isn't anything about us that isn't affected by our menstrual cycle hormones. Okay, here's a, a kind of a quiz question. Which of the following issues are men least likely to talk about? Probably their girlfriend's period. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's taboo in our culture for men to talk about periods. And as women, we honor that by hiding our periods from those that are close to us. Mm -hmm. So often we don't even know if our sister or mother when we were growing up were having their period. Another idea that our culture has about menstruation is that it only has to do with wanting children. That if you don't want kids, you might as well be on the pill and suppress your own menstrual cycle. Um, just, a, just another question. How, what percentage do you think of Canadian women have used the birth control pill for three months or longer? 65, 70. Okay, any other guesses? Yeah, at I least guess around that. 86. So it's an incredibly uh, common thing to use with what hormonal contraception is, which is high enough hormones from some other source to suppress our own reproductive hormones. That kind of um, suppression of a natural function is a, is a necessary important thing if you need protection from pregnancy. Uh, but now, as you probably know, there's a, a push to have women using birth control pills or some other kind of hormonal contraception continuously with the idea being that you could eliminate the period and mm -hmm. therefore all of women's woes would be solved, right? Um, and women typically tend to become interested about menstrual cycles when they want to get pregnant. And so there's an uh, assumption that the primary thing that menstrual cycles are about is fertility. Mm -hmm. So we often forget that they're also about a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. What times during a woman's life cycle are low estrogen levels normal? All of the above. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. During the first few days of the menstrual cycle, if you were to have a blood test, that blood test would look like you were menopausal. Mm -hmm. And sometimes women do have such a blood test and they get all panicky. In spite of having regular periods, their estrogen was low and therefore they think there's something the matter. It's interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We just talked about the estrogen levels being low in the first part of the menstrual cycle. Here, um, the dotted line is the estrogen and it tends to gradually start from that low during flow and increase to a peak that's about 
220% above the baseline during the period at the mid-cycle peak. Anybody know how you would tell that you were at the mid-cycle peak? Discharge. Okay, what kind of discharge? Kind of sticky, slippery. Yeah, egg white, stretchy. Okay. And then estrogen levels go down a little bit because what's amazing is that the, the nest of cells that surrounds an egg in the ovary has been making estrogen. That, that one um, collection of cells, the follicle, has become the biggest and it's the one that's released the egg. But the cells that previously made estrogen now have to change their um, chemical machinery and start making progesterone. So then progesterone starts being made after the egg is released, and its levels rise a huge amount, actually to 1,400% above baseline, a massive amount of outpouring of, of a hormone. And that level stays high for, ideally, about 14 days, two weeks, um, but in reality, often for only 10 or 11 days. And then both estrogen and progesterone levels drop. So the, the ebb and flow of these two hormones has an orderly pattern, but there's all kinds of variety in there. So what would be the normal menstrual cycle length? 28 days. 28 days, the lunar month, right? What's the range of normal? Like 20 to 35 days. Okay, 21 actually is okay. the shortest it can be and be recognized as normal, okay. and 35 or 36. Um, which of the following causes disturbances of egg release or ovulation? All of the All above. Of, all of the above. Something as minimal as worry with a perfectly normal weight is enough to disturb ovulation. Is, are some women more prone to that than others? Um, all of us are more prone when we're younger. Mm -hmm. In other words, the first few years after we first get our periods are often non-ovulatory, no egg release. Um, later on, it becomes more sturdy and it takes more to disturb it. Mm -hmm. And there are a few people who have a, a hereditary risk for mm -hmm. irregular cycles or not ovulating. Um, there's really two kinds of ovulation disturbances. One in which the brain is saying, this woman is under too much of some kind of stress, physical, emotional, uh, nutritional or something, so that it's not a good time for her to get pregnant. That is the common kind and I call it turned off an ovulation. Mm -hmm. That's a very protective thing for our bodies. That would be a disaster for a people if a woman who was starving got pregnant, you know, because mm -hmm. the demands of the baby and the demands of the woman. The other kind of anovulation is turned on anovulation. And that's the situation in which the um, anovulatory androgen excess occurs. And for some reasons that aren't entirely clear, there's higher pituitary hormones. They drive the ovary, which isn't able to ovulate, it puts out too much male hormone, which in turn prevents ovulation, and it becomes a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is that the turned off anovulation poses a risk for osteoporosis in young women, but the turned on one mm -hmm. usually has normal bone density, and it poses a risk for cardiovascular disease.